Hello again, everyone. Mr. Home Scientist started a series recently on purifying over-the-counter chemicals for the home lab. This inspired me to make my own video on this subject. I originally had planned to do this video several months ago, but never got around to doing it until I saw his video. So without further ado, in this video we're going to purify over-the-counter nitric acid. Okay, so here's the product we're going to pull the nitric acid out of. It's called Psychogard Heavy Duty Cleaning Edge for Concrete. I bought this at Home Depot about a year ago next to the bags of concrete. You can also buy it at building supply stores. Psycho site will also list locations close to you where you can buy it. Upon viewing the back list of ingredients, you'll notice it's made up primarily of water, phosphoric acid, and nitric acid. Well, this is perfect for distillation. Phosphoric acid is like sulfuric acid. It has a high boiling point and nitric acid has a much lower boiling point, making distillation simple. Or at least that's what I had hoped. More on that later. Since the label doesn't give us the amount of nitric acid the bottle contains, we need to determine if it's even worth the effort to distill it. So I poured out 100 milliliters of this solution into a graduated cylinder. We need something that can react with the nitric acid and not the phosphoric acid, and if possible, give a colored compound. Copper works great for just this purpose. It will only react with the nitric acid and it gives a blue compound, copper nitrate, that will color the solution giving a very rough estimate on how much nitric acid is in solution. As the nitric acid reacts with the copper metal, the solution will become a darker and darker blue color. If by the time the reaction stops and we only have a light blue solution, we can deduce that the nitric acid concentration is low. However, if it stops and is very dark blue, then we can conclude that the concentration is high enough to warrant distillation. So after two days, the reaction is still going. The solution has taken on a very dark blue color. So it would appear that the concentration of nitric acid is sufficient to warrant the distillation. So I set up with 500 milliliters of solution in a flask and began to bring it up to heat when, as you can see, Right at the time of boiling, I got hit with foam. Lots of foam. This was the problem I mentioned earlier. So after a day of trying different anti-foaming agents and larger flasks, I found the best thing to do is just let it go. Eventually the foam will subside, and then you can stop the distillation, remove all the parts, wash, and then place everything back together and begin distilling again. Most of the foam goes over with the water, so you're not really sacrificing much as far as your yield goes. After the foam is taken care of, your distillation can continue in the normal way. It's very important to not overheat, as this will cause the nitric acid to decompose. I began to collect the distillate when the temp reached 110 degrees C. Nitric acid forms a maximum boiling azeotrope with water at 120 degrees C. However, there is still a small amount coming over at the lower temp that I plan to collect. This way I can have a dilute solution of nitric acid. At 118 degrees C, I switched the receiving flask out for a new one and collected all the distillate from 118 degrees C to about 123 degrees C. At these higher temps, you can expect some of the nitric acid to decompose. So here are my two receiving flasks. Let's talk about the one on the left first. I collected 171.5 milliliters of distillate taken from 110 degrees to 118 degrees C. After titration, I found it to be a 2.47 molar solution. The flask on the right is 110 milliliters of distillate taken from 119 degrees C to 123 degrees C. After titration, it was found to be a 10 molar solution. If these results could be repeated for each 500 milliliter amount of solution in the 3.79 liter bottle, then you could hypothetically collect about 758 milliliters of a 10 molar solution. 10 molar is reasonably strong. For example, it can react with copper without heating. However, if 10 molar is not strong enough, it can always be concentrated which is what we'll do next. To concentrate, I place the 110 milliliters of nitric acid in a round bottom flask. Then I added 
100 milliliters of chilled concentrated sulfuric acid. The sulfuric will break the azeotrope and dehydrate the nitric acid, allowing us to distill the nitric acid without the water, thus concentrating it. Heat this solution very slowly to limit decomp of the nitric acid. Continue to distill until you notice white fumes coming from the reaction flask. This indicates that you're done. After about 45 minutes, I was done and found that I had collected about 42 milliliters of the now concentrated nitric acid. Blowing air over the acid causes it to give off white fumes, indicating that I have white fuming nitric acid around 16 molar solution. Now of course any nitric acid video is incomplete without showing it reacting with copper. Be sure to store your nitric acid in a light proof bottle and in a cool place, preferably a lab freezer. Thanks to Mr. Home Scientist for motivating me to do this video and thanks to everyone else for watching.